Hi guys, so welcome to my channel. This video is gonna be a bit different. It's just gonna be quite long, but I thought it would be just worth it because I've managed to film really up close. Although the application part, it shows in a way upside down. I did not put my camera upside down. I held it the same the entire time. You're gonna see after the application, towards the end that it shows it properly, but I didn't manage to turn it because I'm using a nap on my phone, so it just didn't happen. So, but I still thought it's quite a good shot, so I just left it like that. So here I'm just showing you my application. We're just gonna do an ombre fade, just quite simple. It's so simple and so easy to do, but I just thought, you know what? I will explain the way I do it, and I just think it looks lovely at the end. So what I did. I've already prepped the nails. This is a new client. We got clean nails we're working on. I've just prepped the cuticle area. Uh, I've also applied my forms and we extended the nails and we've pretty much shaped them the way she wanted. My client wanted them really, really square nails. So that's what I did. <clears throat> now, I am taking a bead, quite dry bead. I dry it on my towel. Uh, and I just place it at the at the edge. I make sure I really get in those corners and then I take my brush and I just flip it up just to try and fade it as much as I can. I'm not gonna worry that much because I'm gonna come with the cover powder from CJP, it's called Birthday Suit. So that will help me blend it really nicely so I'm not that, that worried about it. I'm doing the same for this nail also just make sure I get into those corners and obviously on the side walls I don't want to leave any gaps or anything so I really want to make sure I feather that up here I'm using the I'm pretty sure I'm using the NSI uh, radiant white I'll check anyway if I can't remember something will be in the description box below anyway So doing the same for every single finger which is 10. <laughs> Again, I'm not worried a lot about how blended it is in the middle because I'm gonna use a cover powder so it doesn't, it really doesn't matter for me at least anyway. I was having a bad day with my application and my falling and everything. I was really tired anyway, so I just have to go with it. Now, the set. I'm taking that birthday suit from CJP. I'm just applying it as close as I can to the cuticle area without touching it. And I'm using a quite dried bead so I can manipulate it the way I want it so it doesn't leak anywhere. So I don't flood the side walls because I do hate that. I don't hate touching the skin with acrylic, but if it happens, I just wipe it off really quick. So for the pinky, I've applied just one bead because that is enough. The nail bed is really small so that that is enough but for the other fingers because the nail nail bed is quite quite wide i feel the need to apply two so i apply one as you can see now quite in the middle and i feather it down and then i take another bead the same quite dry and i apply it towards the cuticle area and then i manipulate it on the side walls and i just feather it down I'm working as thin as I can because I'm gonna encapsulate every single finger uh, with the clear cleric from NSI also. <coughs> the same from this finger also, they're all the same. Just two of them, they're gonna have a bit, something a bit different. Again, I'm taking that bead, putting it towards the cuticle area, I make sure I don't touch it. Try and manipulate it towards the side walls and make sure I don't touch it, just feather it down. I'm not trying to make a perfect blend, I'm gonna use a pigment at the tip. I'm gonna feather it up so you won't matter pretty much at all. Here I'm just using just a tiny bit of clear acrylic and I'm using some angel paper and I'm just sticking it randomly everywhere it really doesn't matter the placement so 
So we did this on two fingers. Here I'm showing you the thumb. I do the exact same thing. I take one bead, I put it in the middle, and then I take it towards the side walls. I make sure I cover the entire nail. I feather it down. I'm not bothered again about the fade much. And I'm now I'm gonna come with another bigger bead. The same, quite dry. I like to work with my acrylic quite dry because I want to have control over it. I want to be able to manipulate it the way I want it. I don't want it to touch the side walls much. I don't want to flood the cuticle area. I don't want to do anything like that. So here I am, I'm just taking my scissors and I'm cutting a bit of the excess. I'm not bothered much. We can just file it down. And that's the baby stretching. <laughs> now I'm just taking a clear bead and I'm encapsulating with every single finger. I mean nail. So I'm trying to work with just one big bead for every single finger so I don't have to go back and also I focus on my apex but first I focus on making it really flushed around the cuticle area as flushed as I can make it because I want it to blend really nicely when it grows. Here I just make sure I cover it really well though I don't want to end up filing any of that angel paper although it does happen sometimes so it doesn't matter the result is still great and I think it looks amazing anyway but I still want to avoid that the same for each nail and there's a little alien in that bead there but we'll be fine I'll just I'll just cut it at the end And I'm trying to make sure that my bead is still quite a bit wet and also my brush is quite wet also because otherwise it will kind of stick to my brush and I won't be able to just press it down on the nail or to drag it down it will just stick to my brush if my brush is too dry so bear that in mind and here miraculously the <laughs> the footage it should is the way you should be. <laughs> it's not upside down. <laughs> I have tried to move the footage from the beginning to try and turn it, but I'm using an app on my phone and it just won't do it for me, so Here I'm just taking my nail drill and I just go around the cuticle area. I'm trying to make it as flushed as possible. Here I'm using a bit that is, uh, is a fine bit from Carbide. And it actually has like a safety bit on top. So I can really go around the cuticle area without cutting my client, which is, which is really good. You don't want that. So I go around the cuticle area of every single nail. I don't like to go with my hand file around that much because I still think it may be a bit too harsh so I'd rather go with this one, it's really soft and even if I touch the skin by accident it's so soft it won't, she won't even feel it I go only around the cuticle area, I don't go any lower only if there's any bulk I want to eliminate. If not, I don't go because I don't want to touch my apex. I want to keep my apex in place. I still don't like to make massive apex big enough so it holds the nail in place, so it holds that weight. And 
so they can have a really nice like C curve on top but not not too much Okay, after I've done that, I'm just taking my 80 degree file and I'm just going around the side walls. We're gonna make like really, really straight lines. That's what she wanted. She wanted them extremely square. And then I go on um, on the free edge. And if I have, because sometimes it happens, if I have any leakage of any acrylic on the corners or anything, I just, as you saw, I've switched my my file that was a 240 grit file and I just go gently right in those corners just to take that acrylic down I'm not going with my 80 grit that is way too harsh and you will probably cut the client so I don't want that so after I've done the side walls and the free edge I'm taking my 180 grit file and I'm just going all over the nail I go also around the cuticle area but just a bit and not very close only if it's needed. If not, I just go at the end with my 240 grit. This is really, really soft. It's a very, very used one. So it's very soft. It's almost like a buffer. So that's the only one that I actually use around the cuticle area. But with my 180, I make sure I go all over the nail and check my apex constantly so I can see if I like the curve, if I need to fix anything, if it needs a bit more filing. And also when I finish each hand, I ask my client to just turn her hand around so I can see from her point of view, so I can see from her side the way the nails look and to fix if I need to fix any lines or anything or if the free edge is not straight enough. And I always dig with my, with my nail under her nail because I don't want any flakiness around that I don't want any leakage I don't want anything I like nails to be clean and really really nicely filed same here going at the free edge gonna go on the side walls here I just took my 240 grit because there was a bit of acrylic there in that corner as I said my application was not that best that day I was so busy with so many clients which I never choose to do to many people per day because my back is killing me and I get tired really fast because I got a baby that keeps me up all night but I did it that day so I can be nice and so I can have something to do but my application was not the best, so you needed a bit of extra filing, which is fine. It didn't take me long anyway, but here I am again with my 180 grit file. I just file any unnecessary bulk. I make sure those lines are completely straight. And when you see my client keep moving her fingers up, checking, that's because I make sure I always ask the client if she thinks looks alright, if she sees anything wrong and if she would like me to file a bit more, if they're maybe too long or anything. I ask my client constantly because even though I like what I see, maybe she doesn't. So I need to make the client happy, not myself. Here we are at the thumb, the same, side walls, free edge, around the cuticle area if it's needed, which is the beat. And I'm just gonna file all over the nail and keep checking my apex until I'm happy with it. And then I'm gonna use my 240 very, very used file that is like a buffer, and I'll just go all over the nail, like heraclically, and until it's really, really soft, I just touch the nail with my finger to make sure it's really soft. I don't like to use a buffer. I've tried for many brands, many buffers. I've tried the white block. I just don't like them. Really, really don't like them. Here I am with the top coat. I am using from the Nail Nails website, the Graffiti UV LED top coat. 
So we're just gonna put a nice layer on all over the nails. I really make sure I get into those side balls and also at the free edge because on the simple ombre nails, we're gonna go with the pigment at the tip. So I really wanna make sure this is a non-tack, it's a tack-free um, top coat. So that is just perfect for our pigment. The pigment that will not stick onto the acrylic. So we need to make sure that that top coat goes really really well on the side walls at the free edge here it is it's called aurora i can't even spell it pigment and i think it's from glitter planet uk i, I need to check and i'll just put it in the description box below i can't remember right now i'm just using a very cheap makeup thingy however it's called to rub it in i usually use my finger i think my finger works best but i'm using this in the video so i look professional <laughs> and because it was a new client so i didn't know what would she allow me to do or not so we're taking it easy so i rub it really 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 well at the tip and i just feather it up i make sure i really rub it on the side balls and at the free edge so when she moves her fingers around, I want the pigment to be all over at that tip. I don't want any gaps, I don't want anything missing. So you can see I keep taking quite a bit of a pigment and really, really going on those sidewalls. And after I did that, I'm just gonna take my top coat again, just on the fingers with the pigment. And I make sure I really seal that, that free edge. And here it is. I hope you enjoyed it. Gonna see you next time at the next video. Don't forget, if you wanna see a bit more, just subscribe and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.